my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the pride. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent, and he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a well-trained of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is lighter. I wish I could describe him. For yet he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. Folks, this is Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Pastor Brandon live broadcast. This is your shelter from the storms of life. Amen. Good to be here today. Um, boy, it's been a while since I did one of these. Uh, I am going to be talking to you guys about uh, something the Lord has been dealing with me on and it's kind of a very it's it's an issue I think that we need to consider but I'm going to try to do what I can to present the information in such a way that I'm going to kind of basically take this time take the time to show you just what the Lord has convicted me on okay um and I, and I think the reason why I want to do that is just so that you see, I don't want to force this any on upon anybody, but I also don't want, um, I don't want people to, th you know, I, I, you guys need to be you. Okay, here's the thing, with anything, you you all have to be. Uh, you all have to have, you all have to basically be made up in your own mind about the issue. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> so basically, I just want to just tell you what the Lord is convicted me on. 
that maybe if it's something that you know that you're struggling with, maybe the whole and maybe the Holy Ghost might convict you too. Okay. So um, anyway, so we're gonna so the title of the message is "Be careful, little eyes, what you see." Um, I think that is true. I think we need to be careful at what we see and what we hear because there's so much things that the devil uses. He uses TV, he uses music, he uses just about anything to try to um, to indoctrinate you into lies and to basically... Uh, bring you down to kind of a, a just basically to put you in bondage to put you in bondage amen and God and God's people and God wants his people to be free amen God says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free amen so we're going to be talking about um I'm going to be talking about Hollywood and going to be talking about um, movies in general and and music a, a, a little bit of a little bit of uh, a little bit of music, but also as well as movies. And um, my prayer and hope is that this will be a blessing to you, uh, and that the Lord convicts you of it as well. Uh, you know, praise the Lord. You know, we need to have the Lord's conviction on things. Amen. Uh, but hang on a second. Let me just turn on my light here, real quick. Okay, I'll be right back. Just a second. All right, much better. Okay, so probably should have had that that light turned on prior to the broadcast, but that's okay. Well, I got that turned on now. Uh, but anyways, before we begin, um, does anybody have any prayer requests? Uh, any prayer requests or any prayer requests or praises you all like to share? You know, please feel free to put those at the bottom of the screen. Uh, the, the comments section, uh, if you have any prayers or praises, um, I'm just going to kind of go just through some prayer requests here. Um, we do have a fellow sister needing a prayer. Uh, please keep her pr in prayer as well as her mother. Her mother's not doing very well, but please keep this fellow sister in prayer. We have a fellow brother. Uh, he needs prayer for his family and his ex-wife for salvation. Um... We have a fellow sister who needs, who wants prayer for the salvation of her father. Uh, please keep Brother Joey in prayer as he has pain here and there and, you know, keep him in prayer. Um, please keep um, Brother Ryan in prayer. I'm sure a lot of you know Brother Ryan's ministry. Uh, please keep him in prayer. Um, and... Uh, Please pray for me and my ministry. Pray that God will just take it and use it for his glory, for his kingdom, his honor. Um, and also, you know, pray for my family as well. Uh, and just pray that God's will will be done. Amen. Um, let's see here. And then, ooh, we have a fellow brother who, uh, a fellow man, um, who needs prayer for a job and direction and you know uh, so keep him in prayer as and then keep um, uh, a fellow sister in prayer for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost amen uh, I know I went through that really fast so I apologize um, but let's you know we we should keep our brothers and sisters in prayer we all need to I need to we all need to amen um, let's see here okay uh, I just want to kind of get into a just I saw something on Facebook that I think needs to be out there and exposed. And um, I basically, I basically put this out on my on my Facebook. So if you if you have questions, go to the link and uh, go to the link and uh, you you'll see it. Okay, you, you'll see it. Just go to my page and you'll see it. Um, there is this thing, it's, uh, the title of it, uh, is Churches Serving Beer to Lure People, is what the title is. 
Um, here's what it says. It says, Christian churches in the U.S. have been turning to unorthodox means as such as concerts, sports, movies, and other entertainment as a way of getting people to attend for some time. You know what's interesting? They got movies in there. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be getting into movies. I'm going to kind of use this as kind of a segue into what my message is going to be about. Um, other entertainment as a way of getting people to attend for some time. But now, there are also brewery churches. That's weird. Um, one is called Castle Church, who describes itself as a community church that is in Orlando that is Orlando's newest premier destination brewery. The church says that while beer is its passion, they also make it clear as a spiritual community, we exist for people first. Stop right there, folks. Stop right there. Okay. Let's see here. God has rules. He's got some very specific rules about alcohol drinking in his church. You know what God says about it? He says, don't do it. And by the way, I don't care if you're in the church or out of the church. No. You're not to drink strong drink. You're to be sober-minded. Now, I understand. The Bible says, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. But you, you, you want to know something? When you're sick... And when you got the coughs, what do you normally take with that? You take cough medicine, don't you? You take, you know what's in cough medicine? Alcohol. There's some, there's actually some alcohol in cough medicine. Okay? There's some alcohol in cough medicine. That's why cough medicine sort of zonks you out. It kind of, it, you, you, you sleep better at night when you take cough medicine when you're sick. Okay, now in that instance, God doesn't have an issue with taking cough medicine for a cold. Okay, but as per strong drink and liquor, God says don't do it. You're supposed to be sober-minded. Okay, hang on a second. Let's I'm gonna, let's just type in sober. Okay, sober. Um, okay, uh, let's do this. Uh, 1 Peter First Peter 1.13, it says, Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4.7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch and uh, watch unto and pray, and pray. Onto prayer. Okay, 1 Peter 5 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let me tell you something. It only takes one drink, one alcoholic drink, to get you hooked. It only takes one. Okay? When you're drunk, you're not sober. Okay? When you're drunk, you're not sober. Okay? When you're drunk, you say and do things that are kind of crazy. And you do things that are not profitable and needful. God tells you you need to be sober. And to and to be sober is you know, if you if you want to know if you want to know what it means to be physically sober, just abstain from all alcoholic drinks. Why? So that the temptation ain't there. Don't drink beer. Don't drink alcohol. Don't drink any kind of alcoholic drink. 
Just abstain from it. That might that way you won't get tempted. Um, Leviticus ten nine it says, "Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die." It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Listen, folks. You're not to have beer or alcohol or any of that in the house of God. And God says that that is a statute forever throughout your generations. Forever. Amen? Now, you have this church that decides to put a bar in their church. I don't know about you, but that is about the most abominable thing that you can ever do to defile the house of God is to put a big old, a big old honking bar right smack dab in the middle of everything, thinking that you're doing God a service by serving up strong drink to everybody. I'm going to tell you something. Under no circumstance should anybody be should should anybody be getting drunk in the house of God. I don't care if it's spiritual or physical. You are not to have a bar in your church. If you do, there if you do, you reject the commandments of God and you go against everything that God says in his word. And therefore, you are not you are you're, you're you're rejecting the Bible by doing that. Thinking that it's okay when it's not. Um It is reported that perhaps it's okay, it is reported that perhaps it should come as no surprise that the first known congregation founded expressly as a brewery church is a Lutheran outpost, part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and it's Florida Bahamas Synod. Since they say that Martin Luther, that famed the 16th century rebel monk, Protestant reformer, is known to have had a penchant for a palatable pint of beer. They even say he once exclaimed, whoever drinks beer, he is to... He is quick to sleep. Whoever sleeps long does not sin. Whoever does not sin enters heaven. Thus, let us drink beer. Let me tell you something. That is about as that thinking is about as warped as you can get it. Thinking that you can drink yourself to sleep, and if you don't sleep, you don't sin. Uh, excuse me. I beg to differ. All you Christians out there. All, all you fake and phony Christians out there that don't that 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 don't do their job and you deliberately don't warn people of what's coming and you don't talk about sin, you don't talk about hell, you don't talk about anything but give me your money. You know you want to know something? You people are asleep. And by the way, if you doing what if you if you go against what God says in his word and you are in disobedience by not doing your job that you're supposed to be doing in the church as per preaching and teaching the truth you are asleep and therefore it is sin people who think that they can drink themselves get drunk so that, so that, um, how do they put it? Um, whoever sleeps doesn't sin and they drink themselves to sleep. Let me tell you something. Drinking alcoholic beverages and getting yourself drunk is a sin. And for people to use that excuse of getting drunk to sleep so they don't sin is a bunch of nonsense. And a bunch of fooey is what that is. 
when you have a church that puts a bar in their church and uses it to draw people is a disgrace to Christianity and is a disgrace to God's name and you are shaming him. You're putting God to shame by putting a bar in your church. And by the way, by putting a bar in, the, in your church, you're not influencing the world. You're letting the world influence you. I think you people that, that think it's cool to put a bar in your church, you people should be ashamed of yourselves. What is this church? Um... Uh, Castle Church in Orlando, you put God to shame by what you're doing. I'm calling you out, okay? Castle Church, you should be ashamed of yourselves thinking that you can put a bar in your church thinking that God will be okay with it for you to attract people. People, that is worldly. And it's sick, it's an abomination, and God doesn't want it. Can I get an amen from God's people on that? God does not want the world leaking into the church. And what do I mean by that? He doesn't want worldly entertainment, such as movies, music, sports. Hey, listen. There are times I talk about sports with fellow believers in the church. Okay? There are times we talk about sports. But you got to understand, the church is not a rec center. The church is not a rec center, and the church, and the church, is not a place for you to drink beer, get drunk, and start socializing with other people. The church is the house of God. That is the house of prayer. But you've made it a den of thieves. Castle Church, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Shame on you for turning the house of God into a den of thieves. That's what you did. The house of God is supposed to be the house of prayer. Amen? It's supposed to be the house of prayer. But Castle Church turned it into a den of thieves. It's stuff like that that makes me mad. You know why? It makes me mad because I've seen churches, I've been to a church where they treat their worship services as a nightclub. And it's stuff that shouldn't be happening in the church. And they turn the lights down. They start bringing out the strobe lights. They start bringing everything out. Treating worship as some sort of entertainment center. And then to top that off, then they got these big old plasma screens, you know, with Xboxes in the youth area so they can let the youth play games. Listen, I'm not against playing games as long as it's clean and biblical fun. But where I have an issue with it is where you have when you start letting the world in when you start letting the world into your church and you start letting the world influence how the church should be when you're not when you should be letting God influence the church so the church can influence the world. Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus is the one to build the church. And all you fake and phony churches that think that you can put a bar in entertainment centers in your churches so that you can grow it, you are, you are, I'm going to tell you something. You doing that, your labor is in vain. And by the way, you're using sin, you're, you're sinning by using sin to grow your church. 
You people should be ashamed of yourselves. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. All you people that think they can get away with doing such things should be ashamed of themselves. That's not right. It's not right. Um, let's see here. What else? Since the since opening the community since the since opening the community has about fifty meetings each Sunday for worship and the brewery beers garden using apps on their smartphones and luau of hymnals and then afterwards enjoy some frothy fellowship. Whatever that means. That just makes me sick. One worshiper said there's no beer during the service, but people can hang out eat snacks together, and enjoy a beer and get to know one another over a cold one. That's a... Oh, wait. Hang on. That's a... That's worldly thinking, folks. Um, the biblical prophecies as 2 Timothy 3. You know what? Let's turn there. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, 2 Timothy 3. Um, 2 Timothy 3. Okay. Uh, the biblical prophecies as 2 Timothy 3. For, uh, foretell signs of last days where in the last days parallel times will come with people becoming lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God and having a form of godliness but, not, but denying the power thereof. These prophetic signs show we are nearing the end of this age and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. Who is looking forward to the Lord's coming again? Amen? This is what the Bible says. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incont incont incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. By the way, I'm going to tell you something. I bet you churches like that that have bars in their churches will despise the truth. You see that nowadays, that people despise the truth. Okay? Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, uh, high lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away for. For of this sort, they which creep into houses and lead captivity, uh, captive silly women laden with sins, run away with diverse lusts. Folks, to have a bar in your church is inappropriate and unacceptable. I think it's a shame that people do such things. And people who drink and get drunk like that and get drunk have a warped mind. And, they, and their thinking is warped. Their reality is warped. Shame on all you people from drinking alcohol. At a church. At a church, folks. Now, some might, some might want to argue and say, Well, Brandon, what about having wine in the church? Have grape juice, people. Wine is okay. Well, pure wine that's alcoholic shouldn't be allowed. That is why you have to. That's why you should have grape juice. One sip. I'm telling you, it takes only one beverage to get you hooked, which means it only takes one to get you drunk. It may not get you actually drunk, but it'll get you on that road to being drunk. Amen. 
So, um, with that said, the world has gotten in that church and the world has influenced that church and therefore that church, I'm telling you what, that church is not going to last very long. God's going to deal with that church. That church is nothing but drunkenness. Amen. Now, um, I want to talk to you guys about today about something the Lord has sort of, the Lord is dealing with me on. And it has to do with the topic of, it has to do with the topic of movies and Hollywood, okay? Uh, the reason why is because I was listening to a message uh, by uh, Pastor Cooley. If you don't know who Pastor Cooley is, Pastor Cooley, uh, Jason Cooley, uh, he is a pastor at a church up in Min uh, up in Minnesota, Northfield. Um, I can't remember his, I can't remember the name of his church. I think it's Old Paths Baptist. I think it is. I can't remember. I think it's something like I think it's something like Old Paths Baptist. But anyways, I was listening to something. I was listening to a message of his on uh, sermon audio about Hollywood and 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 stuff and and you know just the root of Hollywood, how the root um, is bad. And, be, and if the root's bad, then the fruit should be bad, you know? Um, and we're going to be getting into that too. But um, something that I just want to just briefly talk about today, I, I probably won't be a lengthy message, but I'm just going to let God have his way, amen? Um, but anyways, if, if you got your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Uh, Romans chapter 1, let's start in verse, we're going to start in verse um, verse 28 of chapter 1. It says, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness for fornication, wickedness, covetous, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, and veterans of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers, uh, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Okay, here's the verse I want to touch on. In verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God that they commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Amen? Now, Hollywood. Okay? I'm going to tell you something. Hollywood's probably not going to like me very well, but I can care less. They can hate me all they want to, but I'm under God's protection. Okay, I'm under God's protection. I want to tell you something, folks. Um, when, you, when you think of Hollywood, okay, now what is Hollywood? Okay, Hollywood is, some, is basically a piece of wood that um, witches would use to curse people with or they cast spells on people now isn't that interesting okay hollywood is doing the same thing okay all the movies that they're, they're putting out there they're indoctrinating people um you know they're in, they indoctrinate people through their movies through their music and you've got people who um you got people in Hollywood that are guilty of child sacrifice, uh, spirit cooking. Um, you've got all these. You got all this wicked witchcraft that that's in um, that is in Hollywood. And you got to understand that Hollywood has an occultic background. Okay, their root. Their roots are not biblical. They're not biblical roots. Okay, the roots of Hollywood. 
Those roots are the roots in witchcraft. They're rooted in witchcraft. So that makes their root evil and wicked and bad. So if the root is bad, what makes you think that the fruit is going to be good? Okay. Um, hang on a second. Let's. I, I want to type this in here real quick. Uh, let's see in my Bible in the Bible software. Let's see tree. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Good tree. Okay. Turn with me to Matthew chapter seven verse seventeen. Matthew seven seventeen. Okay. Uh, Matthew seven seventeen. It said, Jesus says, Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring the e forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that, br every tree that bringeth not good forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay? So Hollywood. Okay? They have a satanic, their roots are very satanic, which means that the fruit of them is satanic. Okay? Satanism is not a good fruit. Satanism is bad fruit. I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, Hollywood's going to get chopped down and cast into, the, into a fire. You know how I know that? Because Hollywood... That is one tree that produces bad fruit. And I'm going to tell you something. In verse 10, it says, Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into, a, into, into the fire. Okay? Now, why do I mention this? Okay, why do I mention all this? I'm mentioning this because if Hollywood is using their videos and their movies to indoctrinate you okay most likely Satan is using these movies for his purposes and what convicts me is if we're born again Christians if we are born again Christians why are we in, why are we going to see movies why are we paying why are we paying these people who are devil possessed and filled with a bunch of devils? Why are we entertaining devils? Why? Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see here. I'm, I have a verse of mine here. I want to kind of, so just sort of bear with me. I don't have, um, um, I don't really have a, I don't really have notes. I'm just kind of just letting the Holy Ghost just kind of lead this. Um, let's see here. Why am I, why is it not, that's not, that's not it. Um, okay. Well, when I, when I think of it, when, when I think of it, I will, I'll get to it, but I'm not seeing it anyway. But here's the thing. Why are we entertaining devils? Okay. Why? Why are we giving place to, to Satan? Okay. Why is that? Why 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 are we as born again Christians funding um these people to promote sin? 
here's something I'm going to I'm going to throw out I'm going to throw at you that you may you might be convicted of. Okay. If you pay, if you go to a theater and you pay money to go see a movie, what you're doing is you're funding these people to help promote sin. That's what you're doing. Okay? By going to see movies at a theater, you're helping... You're, you're, you're basically help funding these devils to help promote sin. If you don't believe me, turn... Go, so let's turn back to Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let me tell you something. That is New Testament, folks. That is not Old Testament. That is what Paul wrote. Okay? In other words, if you go see... Okay, for an example, you have all that... that what is that? That 50 Shades of Grey nonsense? By going to pay to see that movie in theaters or even buying the movie for yourself and seeing it, you're taking pleasure in what they're doing. Does that make sense with you guys? You're taking pleasure... And what the movies put out there. Okay? This is why. Be careful what be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful what you take in. Because I'm gonna tell you something. With movies and with music. Okay? Hollywood knows that if you go in and you sit down and watch a movie, okay, your subconscious starts to lower and you start taking in the messages that they put in their movies or their music. And that's the thing that indoctrinates you. We have to be careful with that. Even so-called Christian films. God is not dead. Okay? You take a look at that and say, well, sure, God's alive. And I would be, I would 100 percent agree with you on that. Jesus Christ is alive. But you understand that the messages that a lot of these Christian films present, number one, Sometimes a lot of those a lot, a lot of times a lot of those films don't even they don't even teach on repentance they don't they don't teach on hell there's no message of remission of sin anywhere and with Christian films you got to be careful you got to be careful with that too because they can be misleading. Amen? Now, listen. God's dealing with me on this, and, and I, I just feel, I feel led and convicted that, you know, no, well, number one is I've got better things to do than sitting around all day watching Netflix or, or, or anything like that. Okay? I got better things to do than just sit around and watch movies all day. Okay. Number two is that if I'm watching just like movies that my flesh likes to watch, what I'm really doing is entertaining devils. That's all I'm doing. How does entertaining devils bring glory to God? Now, there was a point that I heard... Um, and I might, and, I, and it answer, please forgive me because I, 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 it's, it, it, it's been a little bit since I've heard the message, but, um, 
when you when you um how was it how did how how did they say it again it was um okay so how does watching a movie okay so if you okay if you're going to if if you wanted to expose a film okay and you say well i'm going to watch the movie so i can refute it and stuff like that and believe me that's kind of like the attitude that i had okay but there there was a lot of films that i there's actually films that i've seen like on the internet movie database i would see like these ads for these movies and that I'm like yeah i'm not going to even go see that movie kind of thing but how does seeing a movie just to just to rebuke it and to show why it's wrong how is it that going to see the movie and, and to say that you're going to rebuke it how does that really help your testimony cuz i'm going to tell you something i I'd, I'd had i had that added, i had that attitude i'd say well i'm going to go see a, i'm going to go see so and so i'm going to see this and that, such and such because i want to see i want i want i want i want to see what i can find in there to refute it doesn't very doesn't really bode very well <laughs> you know what i'm saying now maybe i'm wrong on that but I, it just to, you know i can kind of i can see how it can damage a testimony i mean um not to get all not to get all graphic or anything but uh, when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, okay, I've never seen it. I have no desire to see it. It's it's that movie's a bomb is an abomination and disgusting. Should never been released. Okay, but the thing is, is I preached a message against that movie. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how can you preach against something if you've never seen it? It's possible. It's a thing called research. Go and research the movie. See what people say about it. Read the synopsis of it. You read, I'm going to tell you something. They give you a lot of information in those synopsis. You can figure out what a movie is about just by reading what the movie is about. Now I have now maybe I'm wrong on this, okay? But I just sort of feel that what God's dealing with me on is being careful what I take in. Being careful to not entertain devils. Being careful to to what I listen to. You know, we got to be careful with that. Cuz if we're not careful, if we're listening listening to music that seems like it's Christian but it's not, I'm gonna tell you something. It's either of God or it's of the devil. It's there's nothing in between. By the way, there is no such thing as Christian rap. I don't. Hey, people. If people want to get mad at me for that, go right ahead. There is no such thing as Christian rap. Okay, rap is nonsense. There's no such thing as Christian rap. That's like saying that there is there's a correlation between Baal and Christ. When Paul says, "What con what con what ha what what concord hath Christ with Belial?" Okay, light and darkness are separate things, people. They're two separate things. They're opposites. Amen. I, hey, listen. There's some things that, that may seem really hard to hear. But here's the thing. I'm just I'm just simply telling you what God's dealing with me on. Okay. You have to you have to make you have to make up your own mind. You have to be convinced in your own mind. Okay? Amen. Um, 
Let's see here. Oh yeah, I was trying to find I was trying to find that one verse and I can't remember. Let's see here. I wonder. Um Uh, I'm gonna look at my phone real quick. I'm sorry, I don't have notes. I, I I just I just wanted to I just wanted to share this because it's something that God was dealing with me. Um, if no. Oh, okay, I found it. Okay, Ephesians four, Ephesians four. Okay, Ephesians four. Okay, Ephesians chapter four. Verses 27 to 30. Um, actually, no. We're, we're just going to... We're just going to... I'm just going to read verse 27. Okay? Verse 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Let me tell you something, folks. If you are paying money to go and seeing a film that came straight out of Hollywood or Hollyweird I call it hell you know you you pay a film that came straight from Hollywood um you're not just entertaining devils you're giving place to the devil We shouldn't do that, folks. It says here in Ephesians, if Ephesians 4.27, ne Neither give place to the devil. When, you, when, you when, when a born-again Christian entertains devils by paying money to go see a film, um... You're giving you're giving place and room for the devil. That's what you're doing. And by the way, it's not that God can't work, can never work in you. It's just it will make it harder for God to work in you because you're giving place to the devil and his message from Hollywood. And God can't speak through that. Well, I mean, I can't say that, but you know what I'm saying is that is that you what you're really doing is you're giving place you're giving place to the devil and and what he says in his movies instead of just putting yourself in the word of god and letting the word of god preach to you and you being transformed by the renewing of your mind let's 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 do that here renewing of your mind Okay, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that it what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me tell you something. When you give place to the devil, when you entertain devils, you are not. You're conforming yourself to the world. God says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind? The Word of God. It is the Word of God that renews and tra and is, renews your mind. It transforms and renews your mind. You know why? Because when you read the Word of God, you're getting what God says what God says and what God is trying to tell you. Instead of going and pay a movie to go and sit down and be and entertaining devils and letting the devil impart, impart things in your mind that is contrary to what God says. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to save you a whole bunch of time. Everything that can't, comes out of Hollywood is nothing but indoctrination of the coming one world order, the, the, the coming Antichrist, the rise of the Antichrist, and, and, and you getting a mark in your right hand or forehead. 
okay? That's the indoctrination. I'm going to save you time. That way you don't have to go out and have to, to spend a whole bunch of movie, a whole bunch of money on movies. Now, listen, <laughs> you know, we can't be feeding our flesh. And that's what watching a movie does. It, when we watch a movie, we're feeding our flesh. And a lot of, and, and, and every single, tr single movie that comes out of Hollywood is nothing but trash. It's nothing but trash and garbage from the pit of hell. Hollywood, you're not going to like that, but I don't care. Because you've got to be called out. <clears throat> you're going to be, you can, Hollywood, Hollywood's getting called out. I'm calling Hollywood out. Okay? Hollywood is nothing but a cesspool of devils and devil worshippers as well as well as child traffickers and all these other and all these other wicked people. Now don't take don't take that and think that oh there's then there, there must not be anyone good in California. Let me tell you something. I bet you there are probably some very it's not much, but I bet you there are some probably very good Bible preachers around the Calif around the Hollywood area that preach the gospel. But I'm talking about the people and film industry. They are they are a bunch of child trafficking, devil worshiping Fork tongued devils from the pit of hell that the de that the, that these devils use to indoctrinate people by their movies and by paying money you're actually paying them to basically advertise sin and by the way God will hold you accountable for that you know why okay turn with me okay let's I know we're going back to Romans again but I got I got to emphasize on this. Romans chapter 1 verse 32 Who knowing that who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them Well I'm going to tell you something God has really I mean he he has He's dealing with me, uh, and I know that hurts, but you know what? That's kind of how I've been feeling for the past day or two, okay? God's been dealing with me on this issue, and I got to warn you. I got to warn you guys, okay? There's, there's not a whole lot of good that comes out of Hollywood. A lot of that is just a bunch of indoctrination trash to indoctrinate people into the one world order to receiving a mark in their right hand or forehead. That's what it is. And by paying money to go and see all that filth trash and, and, and movie theaters, you're really entertaining devils and you're giving place for the devil. And born again believers ought not to do that. Born again believers ought not to give place to the devil. As a matter of fact, you should be giving place to God. You know why? Because ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The only thing that will make you free is the truth. Pilate said, what is truth? You know what truth is? I'll tell you what truth is. Truth is this King James Bible. Truth is a person. Truth is not just a person. Truth is God. Truth is God in the flesh. Truth is 
Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. And yes, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Amen. You know, I wonder. I got I I just wonder on something. Oh. Oops. I wonder if you type in truth in the pure Bible search software, truth is found 235 times. There's 235 occurrences of the word truth. There are 202 verses and 166 chapters and 46 books. 46. That's the na that's the number of chromosomes you have, isn't it? You know what chromosomes are? Chromosomes are is what is what stores your DNA. Wow. Isn't that interesting? 46 books, 46 chromosomes. You know what? You know what your Bible is? Your Bible is DNA. And the Bible is truth. 46 books, truth is found. DNA has two strands with four base pairs. Your King James Bible has two testaments, four Gospels. The four Gospels connect the Old and New Testaments. The four base pairs connect the two strands. Truth is your Bible, folks. That's amazing, isn't it? Truth is your Bible. And by the way, you know that your Bible is truth because holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God is the one who authored this Bible. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Listen, um, we need to be careful at what we take in. Okay? Um, really quickly, let's see. I want, let's see here. We need to be careful what we take in. Okay? Um, we do. Turn with me to Acts chapter 19. Acts 19. Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 19. Um, actually, let's let's go on let's go on verse 18, okay? Verse 18. Actually, no, we'll start in verse 17. I'm sorry, verse 17. Okay. And this is known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Verse 19. Many of them also which, which used curious arts. That's witchcraft, folks. Okay? Used Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of the, the word of God and prevailed. You want to know you know what they did? You know what these people did? 
they confessed and shoot their deeds and they took all their witchcraft books and they burned them in the sight of men regardless of the price. You know why? Because price, when it comes to eternity, price, there is no price for eternity. Okay, there is no, when it comes to eternity, price does not matter. You know why? Because the price of so-called values that do nothing but entertain devils need to be burned up in fire. You know why? Because eternity is too long to be wrong. And all these people that were probably into witchcraft, they took all their expensive witchcraft books, and you know what they did? They set them on fire. They destroyed them. And by the way, when they destroyed those things that were keeping them in bondage, you know what happened? Look in, look in verse 20. It says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Listen, folks. Okay, believers, this message is for you. Okay? I know I preach some hard things, but it needs to be said. And actually, this is going to be a good time to close. Okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to say this in closing. Believers, okay, this message is for you. So, is there anything in your life that's hindering the word of God to grow in your life and prevail? Is there anything in your life that's keeping you in bondage and preventing the word of God to grow and prevail? Because if there is, you need to get it right. You need to get, you need to get it settled with God. Listen, I used to watch a lot of movies. Okay? It was a stumbling block. You know why? Because I'd choose rather to do this, to, to watch movies than anything else. Which got me lazy. God had to deal with me on that. And by the way, I'm going to tell you something. I had some hardships in the past. And you want to know something? Thank God, I think, praise God for all those hardships. You know why? Because God had his hand in it to where it caused me to sell all my movies and all my video games. Yes, I, 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 had, I, I did play video games. Okay, I did play video games. I did watch movies. But God had, but God had did some, God did something to where it caused me to sell my stuff. So why? It wouldn't be a hindrance anymore. Okay, I probably I probably shouldn't have sold it. Probably the best thing to do is either toss it out or burn it with fire. I had to repent of that too. That was something I had to repent of. I had to repent even now. I, I mean re, I mean just today. I mean, that, I mean I had to repent of of my of, of some things that I did wrong and God showed me and God had to correct me on that. And I had to repent of it. Okay? Question is, do you have anything that you need to repent of? I had to do it. and I, I had to do it. I still have to repent of stuff. Everybody has, every believer has something to have something to repent of. There is some sort of sin that we have to repent of. That we are probably guilty of that we don't know. God knows, but we may not know. Amen? So listen, I love you guys, okay? I love you guys. But I have to speak the truth, okay? Don't take everything that I said for truth, okay? I want you to take what I say and you match it with this Bible. If what I say does not match with this Bible, then let God be true and every man a liar. If I'm wrong, I pray and ask that the Lord will correct and chasten me for it and show me where I'm wrong that I might repent. And one of these days, I will have to stand before him and give an account to everything I said and did in this body, whether good or bad. But if I'm right, I pray and ask that he will show you what I'm talking to you about. Amen.
If you don't know, if there's anyone that's watching that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can know for sure today that if you were to die, you can go to heaven. Okay? And all you have to do is sincerely repent, go before the Lord, admit that you are a sinner, repent of your sins, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, to wash you of your sins, ask Him to come into your heart and life, and ask Him to fill you with His Spirit. And thank him for saving you. But most importantly, you need to put your... And by doing that, you are putting your faith and trust in what he did for you at the cross. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is and that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Amen. Now listen... Um, I just want to just take some time here real quick. I want to just go through uh, a line or two of invitation. And I want you guys to think, I just if there's anything the Lord is dealing with you on, I want to just, just, just take this time and just go before the Lord and get it, take, get it taken care of and settled. Amen. Um, I'm going to play a hymn called Saved by the Blood. It's all instrumental, but we're going to play it a couple times. Okay? And then after that, we'll close. If you've got something the Lord is dealing with you on, please, let's get it taken care of now, because if not, we're going to have to give an account for that when we go home. time if you got something the Lord is dealing with you on let's go before him and let's get taken care of amen guys are still doing if you if you still uh, going before the lord i just please continue to do so and and i don't want to take away from that time but i'm going to be i'm going to be closing it off i'm going to close off this broadcast okay listen i love you guys okay if i if i didn't love you i wouldn't be telling you what i, what I just told you today and i know a lot of the stuff i said was probably really hard to hear okay but it needs to be said because hollywood is there's no I'm telling you what, there is no good thing that comes from Hollywood. Okay? No good thing. A lot of the... I'm going to tell you something. All these movies that come out of Hollywood are meant to indoctrinate you and, 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 and put you uh, to basically conform... to have you conform to the ways of this, of this world. Okay? And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these churches, even the churches I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast... Okay, they're very worldly. They are very a lot. Of, most of the American church is worldly, and they're not preaching remission of sin. They're not preaching on hellfire. They're not preaching on repentance. And repentance is something that needs to be repent. I'm going to tell you something. We need to be preaching more repentance. Amen. I'm telling you something. The days are getting dark, and the time is coming. Where, the, where our Lord is coming back for us, Amen. Listen, I love you guys. I'm not trying to be me. I'm not trying to be mean or pick on you, but I do got to tell the truth. Okay. Listen, the Lord is Lord dealt with me on it, and I I got I got it I got it I got to say something. Okay, I got to say something because if not, um, I'm doing you guys a disservice. Okay, but listen, um. I hope you guys have a great Sunday. I know that I know a lot of churches were probably canceled due to the weather. I know mine, uh, my home church was, so I couldn't really 
get to church this morning, but I praise the Lord. I was able to to watch fellow brother preach this morning, and I praise the Lord that you know I got to be able to preach today too. So uh, please keep me in prayer. Please keep the ministry in prayer. Please keep um, our Facebook ministry, our YouTube ministry, and sermon audio ministry in prayer. Um, but listen, I love you guys. Um, stay tuned uh, for next time. Uh, hopefully next time, uh, for the Lord, Lord willing, I think we'll probably finish up our faith series. I probably don't want to get in. I don't want to get. I don't want to drag this on too much longer. So I want to get into some other things, whatever the Lord wants me to. So I'm going to hopefully finish up the faith series uh, on the next Fishers of Men. Uh, next Pastor Brandon Live, we'll get back into the Ten Commandments. And we'll go ahead and just, we'll start getting going, finishing that up and getting through that. Amen. So pray for me on that. Um, but other than that, listen, I love you guys. God bless you. Um, you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a great week. All right. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye.